Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light is causing even more layoffs. Multiple executives are fired at the ad agency that did their Dylan Mulvaney promotion after they ruined the Bud Light reputation and then they ruined their own reputation. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from the New York Post, add firm tie to Bud Light's Dylan Mulvaney fiasco, fires top executives in a huge shakeup. A California marketing firm linked to Bud Light's disastrous tie-up with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney has fired several top executives as part of a major restructuring. And of course, this isn't the first layoffs tied to Dylan Mulvaney's Bud Light promotion. The first big ones we heard about was the glass bottling plants forced to shut down, killing 645 jobs. They had no hope of getting other business. They had no hope of getting Bud Light's business back because they that badly destroyed their brand. They figured they'd go through the entire expense of dismantling their glass plants and give up on them altogether. That's how bad that was. Anheuser-Busch had to also lay off hundreds of its own employees, although this was 2% of their 19,000 employees, and it was marketing people, back office people, not even the people that make their beer. Big, big layoffs still coming, unfortunately, for the people that make Bud Light and other Anheuser-Busch beer. Any day now, we should hear about that. San Mateo-based Captive 8, which canned 13 staffers in July after a top brass returned from a lavish junket to the French Riviera, axed 30 employees now, roughly 20% of its workforce, in the latest round of layoffs, multiple sources told The Post. 20% layoffs is a lot. If you have a five-person company and you lay off one person, it's like, well, it's kind of a big deal, but it's a you know small company. They had apparently 150 employees got rid of 30 of them, so that's a huge percentage of the company. It's not clear whether Captivate Shakeup, which happened September 28th, was a direct result of the Mulvaney fiasco, which led to Bud Light losing its two-decade status as the nation's top-selling beer. Quote, I'm guessing that Dylan Mulvaney contributed, one laid-off executive told The Post, they weren't laying people off before April 1st, when Dylan Mulvaney's promotion came out. Bud Light parent Anheuser-Busch blamed a third-party marketer for sending the transgender influencer a can of Bud Light featuring an image of Mulvaney, which Mulvaney then sent out to millions of social media followers on April 1st and ultimately destroyed the Bud Light brand. But this isn't exactly what happened. Anheuser-Busch blamed the advertising agency who is partially responsible, but they're also completely responsible themselves. This was a big article done in September, panic and rash decision-making ex-Bud Light staff on one of the biggest boycotts in U.S. history. Later in this article, right over here, we get the real breakdown on how did they come up with that Dylan Mulvaney promotion and whose responsibility was it to make that absolutely ridiculous can? Former employees call it incompetence on a national level. The idea for Mulvaney's March Madness post came from a Bud Light team member who, quote, wanted to push and make change, says a former Anheuser-Busch employee. The team member was excited to, quote, slowly but surely plant the seeds of inclusion. Alyssa Heinersheed, by the way, vice president in charge of Bud Light Marketing, who of course was responsible for this, used to talk about her marketing members as team members. Of course, somebody on her staff did this. The brand then went to Captivate, a top California-based influencer marketing agency. Bud Light was trying to advertise to the LGBT community, says a former employee of Captivate. Quote, they obviously wanted to pick an influencer who was part of that community. The actor and singer Renee Rapp was also considered, they recall, though it's unclear if those conversations ever got off the ground. Quote, I was surprised at the LGBT focus given the Bud Light name, but I was interested to see where it would go from here. And this is really where they went wrong because Captivate, their marketing people, they know this is completely inappropriate. Sometimes a vendor gets asked by a customer to do something that's bad for the customer. The vendor is supposed to speak up and say, hey, are you sure? 
Did you really think this through? Because this could be a problem for both of us if it doesn't go right. Apparently, people thought about that but never said anything. Mulvaney was contracted for the sponsor post and received an estimated four or five figure fee for the service. The Bud Light brand team assigned Draftline Anheuser-Busch's own in-house creative agency, which means these are employees that work directly for Anheuser-Busch to design Mulvaney's customized can. No one there batted an eye. Quote, we do cans for everything, said the ex-Anheuser-Busch employee. For athletes or for other brands, we even did a can for Ruffles. It's really just a gimmick in a social media post. After Mulvaney filmed the video, it was sent to Captivate and Bud Light for sign-off and it was greenlit shortly after. And Captivate said this to The Guardian for their article. Quote, in every influencer partnership, both the brand and the collaborating media agencies define the creative strategy, approach, and talent. However, the final decisions regarding content and talent selections rest with the brand. Of course, Anheuser-Busch approved this. Of course, it's really their fault. But Captivate also deserves whatever they get out of this, which so far looks like a lot of lost business. While Anheuser-Busch never named the firm, insiders told The Post that it was Captivate that introduced the beer giant to Mulvaney. And of course, now we finally have the whole background from the Guardian article. Captivate's CEO has never publicly addressed the Mulvaney controversy and told surviving staffers who were not fired or laid off on a company-wide Zoom call that the layoffs were necessary because the company is undergoing a, quote, reorganization. There were several department heads who lost their jobs, one source said. Quote, all of us have watched Captivate spend a lot of money on parties, one fired worker told The Post, adding that lavish spending has been consistent with this company. Captivate declined to comment on the recent round of layoffs, and the CEO did not respond to an email for comment. The company had already fired 5% of its staff in July, days after attending the industry's Oscar-like annual Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. Captivate had chartered a private jet filled with swag to fly the company's honchos, clients, and influencers to the south of France, posting photos of fancy parties at villas and yachts. The company had said the trip was, quote, paid for in tandem with our brand partners and clients having no impact on the company's overall bottom line. The CEO, who was a guest at the White House for a holiday party last December 18th, founded Captivate eight years ago. Captivate has a database of more than a million influencers on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, and counts McDonald's, Disney, Toyota, Nordstrom, Macy's, and Ocean Spray among its clients. So why is Captivate in trouble now? Why are they forced to lay people off? First of all, what Captivate is, is a platform with a database. A company can go and even on their own, they can go and locate influencers and hire them through Captivate's platform, which kind of works like an agency or a broker. For big clients, obviously they get special attention like Anheuser-Busch did. And they probably charge people like Anheuser-Busch a heck of a lot of money to do this kind of thing. And that's fine. So why lay people off now? Because after the Dylan Mulvaney promotion came out, people started to understand, hey, wait a second, not only might we advertise with this random internet influencer and not really get a good financial result, we might actually severely damage our business because we're tied in with whatever this influencer does. So big companies have been pulling back on spending money on influencer marketing. It's very risky for them. Anheuser-Busch has lost at least $20 billion now on their market value. Their stock did come back a little bit, but it's still down $20 billion. The Bud Light brand will never be the same. It's going to forever be associated with people who want to jump into a bathtub with Dylan Mulvaney, which is not the majority of human beings on the planet. In addition to that, of course, they've hurt some of their other brands permanently. Distributors have been hurt permanently. They've really damaged their U.S. business. So Captivate, because they weren't a little bit more careful and didn't give intelligent feedback to their client, really helped cause this disaster in the first place, which is why now they're forced to lay off 20% of their staff and try to figure out how do they reorganize their business so they can keep going, make a lot of money, and maybe convince big clients hiring influencers is not so risky. But I would say this, the next time a crazy promotion comes to them, they will probably talk to their client and say, hey, 
Are you sure you want to do this? Because it doesn't seem like this influencer really fits your brand. That was their responsibility. They didn't do it the first time around. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Do you think Captivate should have spoken up to their client or do you think they should have just taken the money and run? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.